Hello everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we'll take up two problems from Pathfinder. Both these questions kind of have a similar solution. So yeah, the first problem is question number six from the build your understanding section. So the question is in free space, we have a particle that is projected from on the axis of a fixed rigid cone AOB at an angle of 37 degrees with the axis. The distance of point P from the apex O is X and the apex angle of the cone is beta. All the collisions of the ball with the cone are perfectly elastic. We have to find the distance of closest approach of the ball from the apex and how many times the ball collides with the cone. So, okay, so the reflections of the light ray will look something like this. So we have to find what is the minimum distance of the light ray uh, from the point O. So I'm saying light ray, but in the question we have a ball and all collisions are elastic. So, but it doesn't matter as in both cases, the basic rule uh, is the same and that is the angle of incidence uh, will be the same as the angle of reflection. So yeah, let's discuss the problem. Okay, so this is the given situation. Ball is projected at an angle of alpha to the horizontal and the angle of the cone is beta. So, okay, so now of course the reflected ray will look something like this and the second reflected ray will look something like this. Okay, so Okay, so now the thing is, uh, the manual way to f solve this would be you figure out this angle, then this will also be alpha. You figure out this angle, and this angle will also be equal. Okay, likewise, you keep doing that for all the rays, and then you figure out the minimum distance, but that will be a pretty lengthy approach. Okay, and for this approach, uh, firstly, I'm going to remove the third ray. Okay, and I'm just going to focus on this ray and this particular mirror. Okay, so these two. So, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mirror image of the ray I marked and the mirror about the first mirror. Okay. So the yellow ray will look something like this and the image of the other mirror will look something like this. So let's try to draw that. Okay. So this is uh, consider this as the mirror. So we took the mirror image of this mirror. So that will look something like this. Okay. Such that this angle is also beta. And the mirror image of this about this mirror is just going to be the original ray itself. So that for that, we can just continue our original ray such that it intersects. OK, so this yellow line is the mirror image of this yellow line, uh, as you can see. OK, so this is the reason why this approach is actually pretty useful. It's because we can. So let's say these are mirrors M1, mirrors one and two. So if you take the mirror image of two about one then the thing is we can avoid this zigzag pattern of the ray and we can just keep the ray along a straight line that way we don't really have to care about these angles so now let's consider the next reflected ray so that's going to look something like this okay and if you draw the symmetric um, ray on the on the fake part uh, that ray will look something like this so now if you look at it here we once again have a breaking Okay, so once again, we are going to do the image trick. So now what we're going to do is let's say this is mirror A and B. So now what we're going to do is um, flip mirror B about mirror A and also flip this ray. So, so let's draw that as well. So this is the image of the mirror and the ray will look something like this. Okay, now the thing is these two rays are also identical. Okay, so now um, Let's once again uh, uh, summarize what we did so far. So this is where the first reflection happened. So our whole goal was to get rid of this zigzag type of pattern and we wanted to replace it with a straight line. So the logic is that instead of taking considering the reflection here, we will just reflect this mirror about this mirror. So which would look something like this. OK, and also take the mirror image of this ray about this mirror so that will look something like this so these two rays are exactly identical okay so now the thing is uh, we'll do the same thing for this ray as well so the mirror image of this ray is going to be like this okay and now we'll further flip this mirror about this mirror which will look something like this and and by doing that this ray will once again become straight so likewise if we keep doing it again and again Finally, what is going to happen is we can consider this ray is just going to straighten out. So this we can just replace this. We can just consider as a straight line. 
Okay, so now let's see how this makes the process easier. If we consider some point um, on this reflected ray, let's say, let's mark it as X. The correspond corresponding point X on the fake ray will be somewhere over here, right? This perpendicular distance and this perpendicular distance are both equal, right? Now, because this is a plane of symmetry, distance of both these X marked points from the point O is the same. So if we consider this distance to be D, then this distance will also be D. Similarly, if we consider a point X on this line, the symmetric point on this ray will be over here, right? And the thing is, we again took the mirror image of this about this mirror. So that was, that was this particular straight line. So the corresponding point X on that straight line is going to be somewhere over here. So now the logic once again continues. So this, as this is a plane of symmetry, the distance of these two X points from O is going to be the same, right? And as these two X points are also symmetric about this plane of symmetry, their distances from O point is also the same, which means the distance of these three X points from the point O is also the same. So a simplifying idea here is that uh, it doesn't matter how the rays are being reflected, the point which is at the minimum distance will be one of this X marks, right? It will be somewhere along the light ray. So instead of dealing with the complicated zigzag pattern, what we can just do is we can just observe which point on this straight line is at the minimum distance from point O. And that is like a much simpler problem. So, okay, so if we just consider the straight line, let's say the point O was somewhere over here. The distance OP was given to be X. So if we consider the straight line and extend it a bit, it's very easy. It's very easy to understand that the point which is at the minimum distance is going to be the foot of perpendicular. So this point is a point which is at the minimum distance from O. So, so we'll just drop a perpendicular over here and this distance will be D min and this is just going to be X sine alpha. So this will be the answer to the first part. So the whole idea was we replaced the zigzag pattern with a straight line and we figured out which point was at the minimum distance. And that was the first question. Okay. Now for the second question, we have to find the number of collisions before we move on. So let's look at the angles here for a second. So if this is the normal to this particular mirror and let's say the angle of incidence is I and now if I draw the normal to our fake mirror, then even this angle is going to be I. Okay, that's just because these two rays are symmetric about this mirror. Now similarly, if uh, this is the reflected ray and the angle of incidence here is some I dash, then the angle of incidence here will also be I dash. Okay, so what we are seeing is that the is that the angle of incidence of our ray with the fake mirrors is exactly identical to the angle of incidence of the in the original case. Okay, so let's just draw some more mirrors, something like this, and let's extend our original ray. So let's say there are n collisions. Okay, so this would be the first collision. This would be the second. This would be the third, fourth. This is let's say the nth collision. So after the nth collision, if we don't want this ray to collide with the next mirror, what should be the criteria? So that's what we have to think about. So for, for that, let's just draw a slightly different situation. Okay, so let's draw another diagram. So let's say this is the original ray. Okay, and let's say the angle that the final mirror makes with the horizontal is some theta. Okay, so and let's just try to draw that. So let's say this is the final mirror uh, and I'm going to take this angle as theta. So now the thing is, um, it's very intuitive. If theta is equal to alpha, that means both these lines are parallel and they will never touch each other. But if theta is greater than alpha, then that means this line has a greater slope and eventually they'll intersect somewhere. So we want that they don't intersect because we want to count the number of collisions, right? So after the final collision, there won't be any intersection. So the condition for the final collision is that theta must be less than alpha. So that will look something like this. And here, as we can see, this ray will move along this direction and this ray will move along this direction and the distance between them will keep increasing. So these two rays are diverging in nature. So they will never meet. So this is the criteria after the last collision. 
Okay, so now let's try to calculate the angle. Here, this angle is half of beta. So this is going to be beta by 2. Okay, so now the thing is there is a relation between the number of collisions and the number of mirrors. So, okay, so we can do something here. So as the first collision occurs on the first mirror, on this mirror, I'm going to just name it as number 1. And this will be number 2 and so on and so forth until the last collision happens on the nth mirror. Okay, so this will be first, second, third, so on and this will be the nth collision. Okay, now, now the thing is all we have to do is some counting. So this angle is also beta. This is beta, beta. So how many betas are there between 1 and n? So and the answer is going to be n minus 1 betas. And to that we also have to add this green angle of beta by 2. So this is the total angle that the final mirror makes with the horizontal. Okay, so now, now if you guys have any doubts with this term, so you can just put n equal to 1 here. So if you put n equal to 1, then the angle, then only this collision has taken place. So the angle is beta by 2. And if it, if you put n equal to 2, it will be beta by 2 plus beta, which is going to be beta by 2 plus beta, which is, okay, and which corresponds to the second collision and so on and so forth. Okay, now this just reduces to n minus half multiplied by beta. So the angle that we calculated was this angle. So theta is just pi minus this particular angle. So we'll have pi minus n minus half times beta should be less than alpha. So if this is satisfied, then the straight lines won't intersect basically. So let's try to solve for the value of n. Okay, so this thing evaluated comes out to be 7.65. So now, of course, uh, like this is not meaningful to us because n can only be an integer. So what this basically means is there will be seven collisions because um, you can just draw two mirrors. So, so let's say this is the n equal to seventh mirror and this is the n equals eighth mirror. So situation will look something like this. Situation would be something like this. So it will collide with the seventh mirror, but it won't collide with the eighth mirror. So, so it looks something like this. Okay, such... So I guess you guys get the idea. So it's like it will collide with this, but these two won't intersect. So, so yeah, if basically if n is gre anything greater than this, which is in our case eight, then what that means is this angle theta is going to be less than alpha and they won't intersect. So that's basically it. So you can also say it is the greatest integer of this particular term. So basically, if you want to write it in terms of a formula, then the actual number of collisions is going to be the greatest integer of this particular term over here okay so which in this case is seven so so yeah that would be the answer to this particular question okay so i'll just give you guys a homework for practice so let's say so this particular angle over here is seven degrees okay and you have a light ray that is coming up from the bottom mirror and this mirror is horizontal Okay, and the light ray is vertical and there is some hole over here. So, so what you have to do is you have to comment the total number of reflections, reflections or collisions that happen in this particular case. Okay, so, so I'll comment on the answer later. Okay. Okay, so this is the next question. We have a, so we have a glass plate that has, which has a cross section in the shape of an isosceles trapezium. The top and the bottom slant faces make very small angles beta which is much less than one degree from each other so these are like slant edges they are they are approximately horizontal itself these surfaces are made reflecting from inside so so the inside surfaces of the trapezium is reflecting the refractive index of the glass is mu uh, find range of values of angle of incidence alpha at the central plane so that the incident ray of light will pass through the plate Okay, so basically what the question is asking is uh, here, obviously, there will be a refraction and you can figure out the angle using Snell's law and there will be multiple reflections happening. And when the final ray reaches the other end, there will once again be refraction. We want it to refract out. So we want the condition for alpha such that the light ray will pass through the trapezium. Okay, of course, initially there will be refraction at the surface. So we can use Snell's law. And let's say after refraction, this particular angle is beta. So we can say sine alpha equal mu times sine of beta. 
Okay, so now we have a light ray that makes an angle of beta with the horizontal and now we can use the trick that we used previously. Uh, so that is basically we can keep the light ray straight. Okay, and then we can take the mirror image of this mirror and then we can keep on doing that. Okay, so it looks something like this. So the first image of the first mirror is this. Okay, then the image of this mirror is going to be this and so on and so forth. So uh, now uh, another thing is guys, this is a highly exaggerated diagram. So if you remember the uh, in the question statement, they have they have given that this angle is a very small angle. So so yeah, now the idea is um, we want this light ray to reach the end. So so yeah, let's say when it hits the other end, uh, it hits somewhere over here. Okay, I'm just gonna make this into a white ray. So let's say it intersects at this particular point. Okay, and with the normal, and we need okay, and we need the angle it makes with the normal. So this angle we have used alpha and beta. So let's say this angle is theta. This line, so the light ray makes an angle theta with the normal at the exit point. So in so basically how it will look in reality is this light ray will undergo multiple reflections and when it reaches the exit point, this angle that it makes with the normal will be theta. Okay, so that will be exactly the same as this angle theta. So all we need to ensure is that this angle theta is less than the critical angle at this position because uh, if it is greater than the critical angle then it will be totally internally reflected then it cannot escape so the critical angle at this position that we can quickly calculate it will be the sine inverse of the outside media which is one divided by the inside media which is mu so what we want is the angle theta so basically sine of theta should be less than one by mu so this is the restriction on the angle theta Okay, so now I'm going to redraw the picture so that it's more clear. So this was the ray that was present inside the trapezoid. So this angle was beta. Now, now the thing is, guys, if if you observe something, if I if you extend this normal, it will go and intersect this particular point O over here. So if I just do that, something like this, this point is the point O. Okay, and this angle will be theta. Okay, so now the lengths for the length. So this length is actually L and we can just consider some value for this particular length. So I am just going to consider that as some X. So the base of this triangle becomes L plus X. Okay, and if you observe something, this would be X, right? Because because this length over here is the same as this length, right? Therefore, this length will be X itself. So now we can apply a sine rule in this triangle. So we get sine beta over x equals sine theta over l plus x. Now we're also given another information and that is the length of the base of the trapezoid. So this was given to be d and we know this angle over here is beta by 2. So we can write tan of beta by 2. So that would be equal to d by 2. So the height of this triangle is d by 2 divided by the base which is l plus x. Okay so now as beta is given to be okay guys so uh, here uh, let's just take this angle as let's just take this angle as phi because beta was the angle for the cone angle right so so this would basically be sine phi okay and the original snell's law expression will also be sine phi so sine phi i can write it as sine alpha divided by mu so this thing i can just write it as sine of alpha divided by mu okay so from here sine theta turns out to be sine alpha times l plus x over mu x and we had a constraint that sine theta should be less than 1 over mu which means sine of alpha should be less than x over l plus x so this is the maximum value of alpha or we can also say that this is equal to the maximum value of sine alpha okay so if alpha is any even a little bit greater than this value the ray will internally reflect Okay, so now we can obtain the value of x from this expression because that's a variable. Now, once you get the value of x, you can just substitute it into this expression and solve for the maximum value of alpha. So it will turn out to be this particular value. And here we, we are using the symbol approximately because we have used the small angle approximation over here. Now, guys, alpha equal to zero is obviously possible, right? So that will just pass through. So the range goes, so the range of alpha will be from zero till alpha max okay so this will be the answer to this question so yeah, this is basically utilizing the fact that we learned in the previous question and then it's just geometry so yeah that's it for this video guys if you enjoyed make sure to like share and subscribe 
that's it thanks for watching